All right, everybody, welcome back to Market Pros and welcome back to Table Talk. I have a trio of traders here today. We are going to talk about where the bottom is. Uh, we are going to discuss macro analysis and come together to collectively figure out where we could go from here. Uh, so first of all, I want to ask you guys, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah, doing really well. Thanks, Brian. Good, good. All right, so, I mean, uh, without any further ado, we'll go ahead and get right into it. And, uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and start. <clears throat> so basically what I'm looking at here, <clears throat> uh, well, first of all, what I believe is going to happen is I do think we get a greater bounce. And then I do think we drop back down and make one more low, a lower low. Um, and that's kind of what I'm... Uh, that's my game plan for the moment. So basically the first thing I'm looking at that kind of lets, you know, tells me that that's what's going to happen is, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it, why I think there's a bounce here in a minute. But first, we're going to talk about why I think the target is anywhere from nine, uh, 9,000 to uh, 13,000 possibly even a little accumulation zone in both regions as you see i have two green regions here those are my dca targets um so basically i have a range measured move the range that we were in um, we have three touches on the top and we have one two three four five six touches on the bottom so that is a uh, validated range and that measured move of that range is the bottom of this green zone. So 11,775 region is basically your measured move of that range. <clears throat> now, could we go lower? You know, I, I think we could. I think we could. And we're going to go over why I think that is as well. So that's basically the only uh, thing I wanted to show you on that chart. Uh, besides maybe the fact that your momentum or uh, that your moving averages are all below each other, you know, your yellow being your 21, your red being your 50, your blue being your 100 and your purple being your 200. They all have negative slopes besides for the 21. So does that 21 bring us up a little bit to maybe the 50 around the 50 in this purple zone, which is about 17 to 18 K 17, uh, eight. To 18k maybe even up to the 100 at 18 750 those are the two levels that i'm looking at for this bounce um and then i do think we head back down uh for one more uh bear market move you know i do think this is the last bear market rally i do think we make a lower low but uh you know there we can always be wrong there's always that lesser probability but uh, we're going to go into the variables that make me think that. Okay, so I'm going to share a different screen right now. And let's see here. Let's go to macro. <clears throat> okay, so here on the macro. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the reason why I do think we have farther to fall. First, we're going to go over the weekly. Then we're going to go over the monthly. All right. So your accumulation distribution indicator, we're on the weekly right now. Your accumulation distribution indicator is pointed to the upside. Now, when this thing has gained a positive slope, we have had some serious bounces, some serious bounces. Now, that doesn't mean that you're just going to have a bull market rally. You know, we have seen lower lows after this has happened, you know, like right here. We did see a lower low after a huge move to the upside. I'm not going to go into the percentages or how many times it happened. We don't have enough time. I'm trying to keep each of these analysis under 10 minutes so that everyone has a chance to talk and we don't make this video longer than a half hour because I know you guys are pressed for time. Uh, so we have seen major bounces after this thing changed slopes. Uh, I do spend a lot of time with the accumulation distribution indicator. It has proven to be a useful tool. Um, so yeah, we are, have changed the slope. We're coming up to the zero line. Now, I don't think we stay green for long, but I do think we turn green there for a second on the, uh, on the uh, accumulation distribution indicator. Now you have your 200 coming in at 18.5. 
Okay, and then you got your 21 coming in at 19.7. So those are the two levels that I'm looking at. They correspond with those other levels that I was looking at on the other chart. All right, second of all, you have your MACD. It's coming up, okay? Your positive momentum was pretty weak there at first, but you are getting another shot. So we could get back up there to that level on the histogram, which would coincide with about 18 and 19K. Next, you have your hash ribbons, entering another capitulation zone, okay? So, you know, when usually except for one time, every time that this is uh, printed a buy signal on the monthly, all right, we're going to go into the monthly, but every time it's printed a buy signal on the monthly, it has, the previous low has been that low. Now, we're going to get into that, but I was just telling you, you know, so you kind of know why I'm looking at this, but here on the weekly, you can still get good signals of great bounces. Okay, and uh, so after your capitulation is done, then you get the buy signal, then you go up for a nice bounce, a huge bear market rally. We have just entered the capitulation zone. So I think, you know, we could still have that bounce, which could lead us up, but I don't think that this is the low just yet. And the monthly is going to kind of tell you the same thing. Now, here you have your, let's see here, which one was this? The PUL multiple. All right, you got your PUL multiple right here. Now, this thing is resting right on top of that green zone. Now, before in the bear in the bear markets before, you have touched the red the green zone. You have touched it. Now, we kind of touched it right here, but I do think we have lower to go. I do think we enter deeper into the green zone, so that could be something for you to watch whenever we do enter in there. That could be the bottom. Now, same thing here on the blockchain fundamental chart. You know, these uh, purple line, these purple regions of the line would have told you when the tops were also entering into this red zone, but we're not here to talk about the top. We're here to talk about the bottom. Now, <clears throat> when you entered this, uh, when you had a purple, as you can see here, there's a purple spot on this line. All right. And then you entered into an accumulation zone. So you did the same thing here. You entered into accumulation zone. Now, I do think we have one more leg down, you know, according to, you know, the contagion. We have macroeconomics coming into play. You know, there's a lot of variables that do make this cycle different. I know people say never to say that, but this cycle is definitely different. Okay. So we, we got to keep that in mind, maybe study some economics so we can kind of stay ahead of the curve. Let's move on to the monthly. Now. Here on the monthly, all right, we have our, uh, let's see here, which one is this? I want to see which moving average this is again. Okay, so yeah, it's the 100. We have our 100 monthly moving average, SMA here, and it comes in at 13K. All right, so that's why that's, that's one of the reasons that's my first target is the 13K mark. Now, Another thing that makes me think we go lower than that is this accumulation distribution indicator on the monthly. Every time we have had a slope change on this has been has been the macro low. The macro low has been put in already. We have not had a slope change. So that 15.5 that everybody's talking about, uh, we haven't had a slope change yet. You know what I mean? Now we could still get it, you know, if we pump up. I mean, we could go to 25K tomorrow. And have this slope change and then the macro low be in but it has not proven that to us just yet it looked like it was going to change direction there for a minute but it did not it resumed to the downside now also we are touching this level right here that has signified a prior uh prior bear market low but just remember there is this level as well we have went into more extreme conditions now you know involving all the variables at play right now i think we do have a shot to get down there and that would coincide with anywhere from 9 to 13k all right so next we have our macd macd has crossed the zero line to the downside now i do expect some sort of support here which is one of the reasons why i think that we have that bounce plus you're printing some light red bars here which means your negative momentum is shifting Okay, so that's one of the reasons I think we get the bounce. But as soon as we start printing another dark red bar on here, that's how you know we're on our last leg down. So definitely watch your monthly MACD. All right, then you have 
your also your uh, Puel multiple on the monthly. Now, as you see, you have entered into that green zone before, and you were lower last time for the prior uh, bear market. So you could easily dip down there further. But as soon as we enter into this green zone, that's going to tell you that your macro low is probably in. So definitely watch this as well. Uh, and then you, we have your hash ribbons. Now, this is the one I was talking about. Every time you've had a buy signal, except for one out of 13 times, has signified the macro low. All right. And we have in, entered in the capitulation zone. Uh, at, we have had a second capitulation zone, actually. So when this is over, that means the low is in. When we get that buy signal, that's another variable that means the low is in. All right, so this could be our last capitulation, which is, you know, one of the, but we still have room to bounce up and still be in the red, which is one of the reasons why I think the bear market is almost over. Now, we still have to enter into that accumulation zone, but, you know, that could mean that the bear market is almost over, that the low is at least close. I think the low does happen somewhere around quarter two of 2023. That's kind of the time horizon I'm looking at, but I'm more focused on price and these uh, macro indicators rather than I am time. As soon as I start seeing the stars align is when I'm going to start backing up the truck and DCAing it. Now, I've already started DCAing in, but, you know, that's this is for the long term and I've only used very small portion of my uh of my dry capital so you know i still have farther farther to go before i really start dcaing in all right so that's basically it for me for my take on the market right now um i'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to aptech and show us what you got all right um can you guys see my screen Okay, so um, before I actually, so I'm gonna look at the, um, I will get into Bitcoin, but I will quickly, I would like to quickly go over the 10 year treasury index security. So basically it's, um, it's the inverted version of that. So this sort of has been predicting Bitcoin's move in advance. You can see we sold off here and then Bitcoin sold off um, a, few, a few weeks later. Same thing here, right? We peaked here, Bitcoin peaked there, and then we just absolutely crashed on this chart and Bitcoin has followed suit. All right, same thing um, correlates with equities as well. So the blue is the is the ten year treasury inflation, and the orange is um, equities. And you can see that correlation. All right, now going now, now going back to focus on Bitcoin. I'm on I'm on the monthly chart. So what will be a natural level that I would have marked out? It would be one. I'm not. This is not low time frame TA. This is um this high time frame stuff. So I will have this marked out. All right. And then I would also have this area of, S of SR marked out more or less around here. All right. So zooming in now. All right. Actually, let's not zoom in too much. Let's go on a three day chart. All right. So it's sort of around this area. You can see um, it's sort of, it's sort of, these are my main SR levels on the chart. Now going back on the monthly, there's also confluence right here. Um, this is the last down candle before the up move. So it's sort of that um, monthly demand, right? Um, breaker demand or block, whatever you want to call it, um, so, or, or supply. You know, you can call it whatever you want. All right. Now, going to the weekly. All right. So we are currently right now within this um, macro range, and I could actually derive a range low as well. That's confluent with the COVID low, as you can see. All right. So I'm going to add that here. All right. So that's my range I'm working with. Now, I don't think, right, I don't think we, well, it's, it's not that what I don't think. I mean, this could also happen as well, but that's not that's not my main scenario, all right? If that does happen now, we'll take it from there. Um, now, there is now there is a mid-range between these two levels. Where is that? Let's use the fit pool, all right? Hit the high to the low. There's our mid-range. It's somewhere around here, right? Um, let's mark that out in a dashed line. Yeah. All right. So that's sort of that's sort of our mid range within within this range. Okay. So I would 
I would look for moves into here. So as long as we stay below the 2017 all-time high, I think there's every risk. Right? We, we could we could do some rally, but then and then and, and then and then come down into here, and then we find our accumulation pattern, and then we'll take it from there. All right. So that's that's one level. Now I'm gonna stick on the higher time frame chart. Um, so now there's also Elliott wave, right? Um, so I, I I just use price action, right? A little bit of macro price action to um, sort of show why this here is a key level but i could also use elliott waves and i actually use elliott waves quite a lot so the bull market pretty much ended here all right so usually we get a corrective three wave move so i would have a wave a a deviation wave b or it could do wxy but more or less the same thing and then the c now how do i find where the c is well usually c is at least um taking out um wave a is low but um I like to use Fibonacci to find out my Elliott waves. All right. So let's see where does our fibs tell us. Okay. You can see that 1.618 sort of aligns with that 10K level, 10K to 12K to 13K level. All right. That sort of lines up. Now, that's just a higher picture Elliott wave. So I'm going to mark that out. All right. So we have that wave. And then that wave C is um, projected to end here. I could also go on a smaller time frame and say, um, this here is a three wave move, right? Wave A, wave B, wave, and then wave C. I mean, some people, some people have it um, as a wave one, two, three, four, five. Personally, I don't think so, just because this wave one is longer than the wave three, and wave three, um, usually wave one, usually it's like it's like this, and then the three is the longest one. So I, I like to use the ABC method. All right, so. Let's, let's do that fib measurement as well. Okay. So here. All right. So you can see that's, that's, that's confluence. So everything is pretty much pointing at this box. All right. Now, let's go on a smaller time frame. All right. So uh, let's see. Let's erase all this real quick. All right. So what was our previous range that we were trapped within? Let's go on the 12-hour chart. Okay. So this was our previous range that we were within and then your mid range is somewhere here that's sort of your your mid range of this box okay now we have expanded outside of this range why let me show you um, pay attention to um this range below here i'm gonna mark that out uh in like a blue color okay let's go on the four hour you can see that that's sort of that retest okay so so yeah, that, that that's sort of that that's sort of your sign that we um we are, we've broken out of that um old range. Okay, again, this is not low time frame trading. I'm just taking low time frame technicals into my higher time frame level of um confluence. All right. So if this was our previous range, if this was our previous range, all right. This was your range high. This was your range low, and this was your mid range. Now, couldn't we? Now we know that 18.6 is that key SR level. Couldn't we make that the mid range? All right, 18.6 is that mid range. And actually, if we go on here and find the 0.5.75, and you can see how how it's sort of lining up. Now this one only goes down to 12.8k, but it's sort of it's sort of around that area, right? So basically, right in technicals, it's it's, it's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a measured move of um, this price action and a measure move down into here. All right, that, that's what I look for. So it's a small time frame measure move as well. So, so yeah, um, it's sort of around that area. Now, what is the confluence with that? Well, let's actually mark that level out as well because it's probably important. Let's let's go let's go look to the left. That's sort of where um, the Elon candle started. Um, many of you guys might not remember this, but um, in 2020, right? Um, I got in around about here, but this is pretty much the Elon candle. So we're pretty much backfilling the entire bull run, pretty much. All right. So personally, right, I think the bottom comes in at um, 12k. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that I'm shorting now and it goes like this. It's 
not not necessarily, right? Um, we're, we're not talking about on low time frame TA. We're talking about macro. So please, um, please don't open short uh, based on part of thinking that it's financial advice in uh, in this video. So, so basically, yeah, I have that 12K level marked out right here. All right. Now, where would where would I be wrong? Where 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 could I be invalidated um, on that 12K idea? So if you think about it, this was a previous range, right? If we reclaim 20K, right, and actually hold above something like this, then um, that's just a deviation, right? So then I think we at least postpone that 12K idea. But right now, right now, I think. I think the risk to the downside still remains, and that um, eventually, right? Rival said that um, we might go to 18.2. Um, I agree with that as well, but I think eventually, right? Let price do its thing, but then eventually, I think we eventually lose this level and come fill it um, back down. Now, um, I'm, I'm gonna quickly um, go over that as well. So, yeah, what's also in confluence with that is the VIX, right? VIX is at 19, and if you if you remember last time VIX was at 19, um, it was August 12th. Where where was Bitcoin August 12th? Bitcoin was at 25k. So I think right, I I think stocks, equities they're about to take a turn. So, and if 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 stocks like ES they, they will go down, why wouldn't I think Bitcoin? We'll take that one more leg down to 12k all right so that's just from a macro uh, standpoint of my view on bitcoin uh, it's also influenced with that is um this chart so how i got this range was the um 2020 range so so i got 2020 yearly open here and then 2020 range highs and then the mid range of 2020 and look at that 0.25 of 2020 right so it's pretty much in conflict with that box as well, right? So, how how would I be looking up to um, pick up Bitcoin when when it comes to 12k? Basically, what is my plan? Let me get let me get rid of all this drawing real quick. So, my plan is, and then here. So basically, I'm not interested in buying Bitcoin from a macro standpoint right now. Where I will be interested in buying Bitcoin is I is quick flush down into here, accumulate, and then break out. That's, that's where I look um, to, to purchase Bitcoin. Now it's not, I, I, know some, I know some people are calling for um, 4K, 3K as well. Um, that's perfectly fine as well. Basically, if, if bearish price action like this happens here, right, then, then I think we backfill a lot of this. But until then, that, that is not my main scenario, all right? My main scenario is that I look for signs of accumulation like this. Now, what is accumulation? All right, let me let me quickly show you what it what are signs of accumulation. Sideways range like these. All right, that's basically where I look for. All right, so I will look for this sort of price action down at 12k, and hopefully we get a clean breakout. And you know what? If it does come down and lose the level, I'll just cut it and and trade it to 3K and think about it there. But right now, um, I wouldn't be blindly calling for 3K right now. Right now, um, I'm only I'm I'm only looking at what's more, what's higher probability, which is this demand. All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a crucial support. And if we break it, let's say I get a trigger to to trade, but we break it instead. That's fine. I'll just cut it for, I don't know, 10% loss. I don't mind. Because right here, the probability that the bottom is in is higher. I also want to quickly bring up the um, RSI. So we are getting bullish divergence on the RSI. Now, could it be that we get some sort of a triple bullish divergence down into 12K? Right? But then RSI is us a bullish divergence. I think that very well could be the case. And then we accumulate and then eventually break out. But yeah, that's pretty much it right now um, for my okay. bottom targets.
it's basically this. Okay. All right. Well, I want to pre. I uh, thank you for that. It was definitely uh, some good stuff, man. We uh, definitely in kind of confluence with that. We uh, have a lot of uh, different variables that we're looking at, and it still kind of came up with the same level. Um, all right. So next is Apex Trades. What do you got? Well, um, <clears throat> interestingly enough, I'm in complete agreement with all y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, right now, just, just purely looking at that macro, I mean, I slightly maybe disagree just on the fact that I think that this is a, a five wave rather than, you know, the C, because whilst you are definitely right, you know, you expect your third wave to be a more impulsive wave or the, lo the longest, it just doesn't have to be the shortest is, is the kind of the, the, the idea on that. And, you know, if you just, if you just take it like, you know, just as that, well, really, we're waiting for this fifth wave to, to come in, and, and, and I, I'm in agreement. I mean, I'm, I'm somewhere around this region. I mean, if I just, just as a, a snapshot, you take, where is it? Yeah. You take your uh, Fibonacci extension. You can see, you know, right in that, in, in, the, in them similar regions, you've got. You know, down at the 14, you've got 1.382 around the 14K, and then 618, or the 1.618 right around that 12, 196 region. So, you know, not to say that these need to explicitly be respected, but it's just more confluence around those kind of areas where I expect, you know, Bitcoin to go down to. And the other thing we've got to not, I know this is TA, but, you know, you, you, we've got to look at the macro economic landscape as well there's just there's just nothing to be excited about at the minute we've got un unemployment which is still you know not not too bad at all you've got consumer and um consumer confidence which just seems to not be ebbing ebbing away at all on top of that you've got you know inflation still going up from the likes of the producers honestly i think next week when we go into this idea of the cpi if the ppi if the ppi was high well, who's going to take the net effect of that? You know, if you're raising rates for your products, by the time it gets to the retailers, are they going to are they going to cut their margin to help the consumer? Probably not. So I'm anticipating further blood, to be honest. And you know, even if we take it to <clears throat> a little bit more of a less macro uh, picture, I think it's 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 coming as you know a, a, a big move down is coming as early as, as as next week once this news comes out. If we go you know to the four hour. Just take that off quickly. We go into this. This is the obviously this FTX drama we had. Just remove that. You know we can see we can see the same kind of pattern playing out here. You've got your, you know, your A, B, C, and the C wave is again. You've got your five, five waves within the Elliott wave. You've got your five waves within your A. You know, you can go one. You know, if you can drop, if you just throw that out, even up this uh, level here. I can move that to there. You know, I know it's going to be quite tight. So move that along. You can see the five wave just on the first one. You go. There's your big impulsive third wave. Finishing off for your, for your A. And your B is, is obviously your, your corrective wave. Overfeeding wave B. Okay. And then and then our, and then the wave C, which which is playing out. And, and I think, you know, personally, you know, my, my kind of idea at the moment is we, because, because wave four has, has, has elapsed wave one in terms of an Elliott wave, we should expect a pretty lackluster fifth wave. So maybe just cleared out that 17,500, which would complete your corrective uh, ABC pattern before a big move to the downside. Now where that's, where that can go, 
is 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 anybody's guess. I mean, you know, you can look at where the key liquidation levels are. We've got li huge liquidations around the uh, I think fifteen uh, four hundred right up to like the fifteen six hundred. So around this region here is 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 big liquidations in the billions, and then above here we've got some really high short liquidations um, around the seventeen five hundred to about the seventeen six hundred. So again, I think if we exacerbate the news that's coming out next week with the fact that we're, we've had this corrective wave, I do believe we're going to see some downward momentum. But I also agree with Bribal in the fact that I do believe we are going to have some some reclaim of, the, of these areas simply because we've got a lot of trap liquidity around this area. You know, all of this is there's a lot of fair value gaps and a lot of trap liquidity right away for everyone who is longing at this point. Who, who, who the market maker will want to come and realise some of that liquidity here. Uh, I do believe somewhere around that 18, 18 to maybe maybe even a bit higher, maybe up to your 19k could be could be realised um, in my in my humble opinion. So that's kind of where I see that. But then going back to your, um, your macro picture, like you say, it's like. Month at the moment. Do you know what I did like? I liked your uh, three days. Uh, that was a nice looking chart. Uh, you have to do a You have to scroll all the way down and do a custom. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let me just get these. Uh, You know the, the the when you look at like the average level in terms of let's see. kind of feels like is it that one? Maybe it's not the one I'm looking at. Maybe it's just a little bit. This level here, you know, before the craziness that that, that Bitcoin was just on a an absolute tear, feels like your natural your natural rise, you know, in terms of where the where the the average value would be, and and and, and on that basis, you know, it's in that well since since Bitcoin's been going. You know that again is more confluence around this 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 area for where we could potentially come down to 13k down to kind of 10k would be that kind of area 12k would be somewhere where we'd be looking at maybe that can actually go a little bit higher actually just if i it's probably a fair, fair way to look at that somewhere around there <clears throat> so again it's just it's another it's another trend line um that just adds more confluence to, to that key area so if you take things like your you know the fibonacci your five your fifth wave going down to where that extension looks like it's very much in that same region as, as what you guys think and, and it's hard to come away from that from a ta perspective for sure add into the fact that we've got a lot of negative macro data and you know we're still 7.5 percent inflation you know we're still adding to that that's going to be the whole of 2023 bit, bitten off in my humble opinion um so that's kind of similarly to you guys i mean i i don't tend to trade you know macro levels i don't really go as as, as much that I'm, I'm more of a kind of day to swing trader maybe one or two days uh, so i'm not looking that far ahead however it's still good to kind of put some kind of ideas down for where you know the eventual bottom can look and a lot just in agreement with what you guys are saying really but it's, it's just what I, I i agree i mean it's, it's hard to look past that kind of 12k region because there's so many confluences all coming together in that specific area so it's interesting that we all come up with the same kind of idea on it yeah yeah for sure um well all right gentlemen we are about out of time uh if you guys like this video like and subscribe to the channel
check out the links in the description below one being the discord a lot of good conversation about creating crypto investing we stay ahead of this market collectively we talk about these moves before they happen also turn on those bell notifications so you get notified with this time sensitive content stay updated with the podcast we have all different kinds of guests talk about all different kinds of things and we do daily analysis every day bringing you content show some support all right well i wish everyone well thank you both for coming on uh everyone have a nice morning a great evening and a great day and i will see you tomorrow Bye.